What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 13 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at how to make our own region maps. We're going to edit it and we're going to get it all laid out fancy so it looks nice in your town map. We are also going to be learning or figuring out how to do fly spots, as in how to fly to different towns. And without further ado, let's get started. Um, what you, The first thing that you want to do is go into your game folder and go into your graphics and go into your pictures and scroll down until you find mapregion0.png. This is what we're going to be editing today. You can edit it in paint if you want. I like to edit it in Photoshop, but um, this is the file we're going to be editing. It's just a picture. You can customize it to be whatever you want. And um, I'm going to go show you how to do it in Photoshop or I'm going to work in Photoshop for this. Um, what I recommend you do is you make 16 by 16 squares. So let's make a quick 16 by 16 square, 16 pixels by 16 pixels. And the reason you do this is because the, um, well, let me just do this real quick. The reason you do 16 by 16 is because every single um, icon or like the cursor that browses the map, um, every single spot on the map, it's like it's a, it's a grid basically, is 16 by 16. You can edit this if you want to make it like 8 by 8, but um, we're going to keep it simple. So what I like to do is take my 16 by 16 square and put it in the top left. Just so that way I can make sure everything's aligned to this grid. And then uh, you can just, if you hold alt in Photoshop, just drag. You don't need Photoshop to do this. Once again, I need to reiterate, you can do this in paint. Um, just work in 16 by 16 squares. But um, once you've settled on a place where you want your town to be, like I'll just put my town here. And let's turn this off also. I can make a new layer. And uh, the way that I like to do um, squares on the town is I like to use really similar colors to like this uh, starting map here. I can just take this color and uh, make a square here. Cool, cool. So if I turn off this red, there we go. So we've got one square. And I can just fill it in. And another, the, one of the main reasons why Photoshop is really good for this is um, it's super easy to copy shapes you've already made. So if I do this, that might be a little bit too much. No, I think that should be fine. Cool. So this will be one square on our map for one of our towns. And you can just hold alt and you can drag it. And remember, 16 by 16, so I want to move it about 32 pixels. That's a multiple of 16. 48 is a multiple. Okay. But um, you see what I mean, right? Like, everything should be on a grid where everything is 16 by 16. And um, cool. So let's turn all of these off now. And let's make our own map. Like, I'm gonna make a super bare bones, really small map. Um, I'm gonna do a new layer. And let's just make like a blue ocean underneath. Put that there, cool. And um, yeah, there we go. Just a blue ocean, cool. And uh, one thing I like to do is with the pencil tool, which is in uh, paint as well, I like to use like a dark green for like a land mass. So if you want to make your continent, you know, you could do like a big dark green and then kind of refine it with like a smaller and then um, pick a slightly brighter green and then draw around the edge. It doesn't look that great. Like I can show you an example of a town map that I've done that followed this. And uh, you know, but you know, this is mainly for people who want to be artists or uh, do the art for their game. Like right now, Right now I'm going to just do really basic art so that I can show off some of the functionality. So uh, let's make a small landmass actually. Let's uh, erase this real quick. Like erase a good chunk of this. And then let's make this dot on the right. Let's make that an island. So I can just do this real fast. Cool. And then let's make this a small little island. And then let's take this and paint inside. There we go. And do a little paint inside here as well. I just need to refine this real quick. <laughs> it 
It looks so bad. It looks so terrible. If you are good at art, then uh, I'm not here to teach you how to do art, right? Like these tutorials aren't teaching you how to be artists or an artist. I'm not really the best person to look to for art anyway. Like my sprite art is pretty terrible. But yeah, like this is this is will be our starting map, right? It's tire. It's, it's horrible. We can also do roots if we want. Um, one thing that I like to do for roots is um, make a new layer on top of everything, and then uh, kind of like connect them th in a 3D sense. Like, uh, make, it's almost like a pipe. Let's see. Know what I mean? So like, there's like it'll be like a white line in between, and then it can go up to like this far. So like this is a root and if it uh, branches to the side then have it like in the center kind of and have that go off and connect and if this is just one of many ways to do the art for your game like I said earlier I'm not teaching how to do art well I mean I can but my art my art skills are terrible I'm here to teach you the functionality, right? So now that we have our map image, right? Like this is or this is just our simple map. We can save it, and we want to save it as map region zero. Uh, you want to save it as a PNG, and we can just replace map region zero. Cool. So now once once you have the art done for your map, I can close this now. Once you have the art done for your map, you've got the image right here. Now we're gonna go to the the part that's actually why you need a tutorial. Okay, cool. Um, go to town, go back to like the top layer folder and open townmapgen.html. It'll open a window in your browser and um, you can see it's loading mapregion0.png, the file we just made. We can see it right here and you can click on different parts. And um, this is why doing the 16 by 16 grid was really helpful. Um, so yeah, we can click here, click on this one for our town and um, it shows you the position, the coordinates for it, and then you can type in the name. So this was Test Town. Point of interest is like, um, I don't know, like a landmark in that place. So we'll call this like Professor's Lab or something. That'll, that's the uh, interesting uh, part. The fly destination is really important. If you want to be able to fly there, if it actually is a town, um, you will want to set a flight destination. The way it works is it's three numbers. The first number is the ID of the map. So let's go and open. You can find the ID of the map by going on the left side here where all the uh, map stuff is. Right click map properties right there on the top ID 22. And then the next two numbers that you want to add are the coordinates where you fly. So I think this was the player's house right here. And uh, the coordinates, if we see in the bottom right there, it's kind of hard to see. Um, are 2611. They're right here in the bottom right. So, what was it? 22, 26, 11. 22 was the map ID. Oh, let me open my browser. Okay, so 22 is the map ID. 26, 11. And then switch is the number of a switch if you want it to... If That's a little more complicated. You don't really need to worry about that. But um, basically it'll make it so that way the map name will only turn on on your map if you have set a switch. You don't really need to worry about this. And then, then you can hit save, and then we'll update this text field down here. So let's do it again for this. This was name root one, oh, if I could spell right, root one. And um, I don't really need to set a point of interest or a fly destination. I don't think you should be able to fly to root one or a switch, so we can save. And then let's just call this root two. Save, and then click again. To save and there's other ways to do it what you can do actually is follow the formatting here if 0.69 <laughs> if 0.69 was root 2 0.79 was root 2 I can really just copy this text down here and then paste and say 0.89 is root 2 cool and then um you can also click there and do it but let's name this test island there won't be a point of interest, but there will be a fly destination. So let's open Test Island. It's an island that I made just a little bit ago. And let's check the map properties for this. Its ID is 48. And you want to fly it in front of the Pokemon Center. So it's 48, and the coordinates down here are 2616. So 48, 
2616. Let's go and open up the browser again. The flight destination for Test Island is 482616. Save. Oh no, it overrode my other thing for Route 2. I guess it's easiest to do it this way. <laughs> but if you want to stick to only doing text uh, editing in uh, Notepad++, then you can do that. Okay, so what you want to do now, what I like to do at least, is to just copy all of this. Cool. And then the place we need to paste it. So you go to your PBS folders, I mean your uh, text files, and then you want to open townmap.txt. So there's already a town map created, but you can just delete everything except these uh, the first line here and then replace it with what you have in your text, uh, what was here in the HTML. So this first line, zero, that's the uh, the map number, or the region number. Um, it starts at zero, similar to how the badges start at zero. Um, and then the file name, which is the image it uses, and then the name of the region, you can change this. Let's call it the test region, because I'm doing a lot of tests and tutorial stuff. Let's actually call it the tutorial region. Two tutorial region. And then you got test town, route one, route two, route two, test island. Okay, cool. And then just because I'm uh, obsessed with the formatting here, let's do that. Cool. So now it should all be set. There will be a couple small things we still need to do, but um, this is the majority of the work when it comes to making the town map. So let's load in and test it out. Load into our game and look at our map. The way it should work is Okay, there's still a couple things I still need to change, but the way it should work is when I open the town map, it will be our file, and when we browse over certain locations, it'll say the name and stuff. So let's look at the town map. Cool, we are. Here we are. Tutorial region it has our image. Did I make a mistake? Huh. Let me uh, check this out real quick. All right, so I figured out what the problem was. I accidentally messed something up in the scripts. So now, when we look at the map, we see everything aligns to the 16 by 16 grid. There's Test Town with the Professor's Lab. There's Route 1, Route 2, Route 2, Route 2, and then Test Island. Cool. So what I did in the scripts was I changed it so that way the cursor was 8 by 8, and I doubled the map size, so it offset all the coordinates and everything was weird. I was just messing around to test it. And another thing that's really cool that I just learned is um, if you press Enter while looking at a map while you're in the debug um, game, you can enter and set a name. So let's call this Mountain Test. Cool. So now that's saved to your map. Mountain Test. Save changes? Yes. Cool. So that will change the text document there. Nice. So now let's try flying. So in order to fly, let me open the debug real quick. You will need to change the metadata. Let me. I press up to go to the very bottom, and I'm holding up a little bit more. You're going to need to set the metadata of the map for test town I already no I didn't do any of this yet okay cool so one there's an important metadata that needs to be set for the map and it is outdoor if the map is not outdoor then you won't be able to fly you know it'll think you're inside of a house or in, in a cave or something so if outdoor is true then you'll be able to fly so let's go to test island and set outdoor to true as well now we should be able to fly so let's save I have a Pidgeotto because I gave myself the demo team. If you want to give yourself the demo team, as a reminder, um, open the debug menu again, which I just press F9. That's the quickest way to enter it. Um, then you just hold down a little bit, keep going, keep going, give demo party. That's how you get the demo party. Um, so I've got this Pidgeotto and now we can fly. There it is. Okay, so I didn't set the fly location for Test Island, I guess, but I can fly to Test Town. and it takes me to the location that I set. Cool. So let's do this again, but figure out why the fly location isn't working for um, Test Island. So let's open, oh no, I'm opening something else. Okay, cool, open these, yes, yes, town map. I set 482616, didn't I? Hmm. Oh, I know what the problem is. I haven't been to that map yet. You can't fly to a map if you haven't ever been there. So, that should solve this. That's a, something that's built into the game by default. You can't fly to a place if you've never been there. So I, I can't get fly and instantly fly to the Elite Four, you know. So let's 
press F9 and do warp to map, which is a really handy dandy uh, debug as well. Fly to test island. Here I am on test island. Very nice. My Pikachu is all messed up because um, on the bottom layer of this place I have all water. If the bottom layer is all water, your follow Pokemon will be kind of messed up. Um, so I can fix that real quick too. But if I do fly now, I have the fly location set here. Cool. And the fly location set here. Cool. So there's one thing that else that's also annoying me, and I'll show you how to fix that right now. When I hit fly, it defaults to the top left. That's kind of annoying. Um, what you can do is go to your debug, and then um, go to the metadata again. So set metadata. So I want to set the metadata for test island. There's map position. What that will do is it'll pull up the map, and then you can left click on where it is in the map. So that's where that is. And it's a good idea to do this for all of your maps. So map position for route one here. Wait, let me click, there we go. Let's see, healing spots. Hmm, route one doesn't have a healing spot. But uh, I can just leave that be for now. It's not as useful for what we're talking about right now. So I set the map position. Essentially what that does is it makes it so that way if you open the map while you're if you open your region map while you're on that map It'll default to the place that you're currently standing So if I open the map again while I'm standing in test town if this makes sense if I open the region map again while I'm in test town The cursor will default to test town. So it's it's an important um, variable to set So let's show off the flying one more time This should take me to right in front of the Pokemon Center because I set the coordinates. Cool. Nice. So, that's flying. I hope uh, hope this episode was helpful. If it was helpful, let me know. Leave a comment. And if it wasn't helpful, let me know what else is confusing. Um, I'm starting to stream more. You probably saw that I highlighted, or I, I uploaded that, uh, it was like five hours. Oh my god. Like five hours of uh, Twitch streaming. I plan on streaming a lot more, so please... Please follow that uh, Twitch stream, or follow my uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash xcamero, and uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to. Um, I'll tweet about when I go live. And I, I'm going to stream myself working on Pokemon games. I'm going to be playing other games too. I'm going to be playing Pokemon Sun and Moon when that comes out. Oh man, that's going to be good. This island is for kids only. We have fun all day. But yeah, thank you for watching once again. I hope to see you next time. Next time, I think I'm going to cover um, turning items into HMs or HMs into items. So like a flashlight for flash and a machete or a knife for cut. I'll cover that next time. It's going to be great. It's going to be cool. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching once again. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.